Welcome to the Neuropathy Support Group and Podcast. I'm Chris, and I'm so glad you tuned in. It's my hope with this podcast to help all of us gather information that might help those that need support dealing with this debilitating issue. Hello, and welcome to this podcast. Before we get started, let's get the formalities out of the way with a medical and privacy disclaimer. I am not a doctor or medical professional. The information on this podcast is from personal experiences and is meant for group support. Additionally, the information discussed is not meant to diagnose, treat, or cure any underlying conditions associated with neuropathy. All names here within are private and will not be shared with any outside sources. Please consult your health care provider before making any health decisions. If you have medical concerns or an immediate emergency, please contact your doctor or dial 911. Well, here we are another Monday, and I hope everyone's doing great. I hope you had a great weekend. Get outside, spend some time with the family. Today, we are going to be talking about something that I talked about probably several, several episodes back. It's about uh, diabetic neuropathy, the different types, the four different types. I remember at one time, I thought there was only three, but when I did the research on this topic, I found that there's four of them. So I'm going to go over each each one of them. Um, Hopefully it gives you some additional information that you might need to know if uh, you do have one of these types of neuropathy itself. So the reason why I wanted to go over with this is because I found new information on the Mayo Clinic website uh, about neuropathy and the different types. So let's get here, get started, and jump right on in. When you have diabetes, nerve damage can occur as a result of high blood sugar. This is known as diabetic neuropathy. There are four main types of this condition. You may have just one type or symptoms of several types. Both types of diabetic neuropathy develop gradually, and you may not notice problems until considerable damage has been done. And I think that's where I fall in that class right there. So again, best thing to do is talk with your doctor if you have any questions of the following symptoms that I'm gonna be reading here on each type of neuropathy there is. The first one is gonna be peripheral neuropathy, and that would be the one that I have. Uh, Peripheral neuropathy is the most common form of diabetic neuropathy. Your feet and legs are often affected first, followed by your hands and arms. Possible signs and symptoms of peripheral neuropathy include numbness or reduced ability to feel pain or changes in temperature, usually and especially in your feet and toes. A tingling or burning feeling, sharp jabbing pain that may be worse at night, extreme sensitivity to the lightest touch. For some people, even the weight of a sheet can be agonizing. Muscle weakness, loss of reflex response, serious foot problems such as ulcers, infections, and bone and joint pain. The next neuropathy is the autonomic. The autonomic nervous system controls your heart, bladder, lungs, stomach, intestines, sex organs, and eyes. Diabetes can affect the nerves in any of these areas, possibly causing a lack of awareness that blood sugars are low, bladder problems, including frequent urinary tract infections, constipation, slow stomach emptying, which leads to nausea, or vomiting, difficulty swallowing, erectile issues with men, increased or decreased sweating, sudden drops in blood pressure, problems regulating your body temperature, changes in the way your eyes adjust from light to dark, and increased heart rate even when you're at rest. So the next type is going to be proximal neuropathy. Instead of affecting the ends of nerves in your feet, legs, hands, and arms, like peripheral neuropathy, proximal neuropathy affects nerves in the thighs, hips, buttocks, 
and legs. Symptoms are usually on one side of the body, though in some cases symptoms may spread to other sides. Most people improve at least partially over 6 to 12 months. But some of the symptoms are sudden severe pain in your hip and thigh or buttock, weakness and shrinking of the thigh muscles, and difficulty rising from the sitting position. I believe I got a little bit of everything here. But the last type is going to be mononeuropathy, or in other words, focal neuropathy. Mononeuropathy involves damage to a specific nerve. The nerve may be inside the face, torso, or leg. Mononeuropathy, which may also be called focal neuropathy, often comes on suddenly. It's most common in older adults. Although mononeuropathy can cause severe pain, it usually doesn't cause any long-term problems. Symptoms usually lessen and disappear on their own over weeks or months. Signs and symptoms depend on which nerve is uh, being involved. So here are some symptoms. Difficulty focusing your eyes, paralysis on one side of your face, pains in your shins or feet, pain in the front of your thigh, and chest or stomach pain. Sometimes the mononeuropathy occurs when a nerve is compressed. Carpal tunnel syndrome is a common compression neuropathy. Signs and symptoms of carpal tunnel syndrome include numbness or tingling in your fingers or hands, especially in your thumb, index finger, middle finger, and ring finger. Loss of strength with a sense of weakness in your hand and a tendency to drop things. And that's one of the problems that I have. But again, I've given you the four types of neuropathy that you are. If you believe you might have one of those issues going on, the best thing you could do is talk to your doctor about it. And of course, all this information is on the Mayo Clinic website, which I will post in my Facebook page for reference for, for all of you to check on yourself there. Now, one subject I notice a lot of on uh, different neuropathy Facebook pages, they want to know what kind of treatment is the best or you should be on while you have peripheral neuropathy. Now, a lot of people have said that you, they've used gabapentin. I've used gabapentin at the very beginning when I first started having the signs of uh, neuropathy. But for some reason, it uh, messed up my blood sugar levels. Immediately, I was taken off that one. The next medication is prebagellin. Now, you got to remember, too, a lot of these um, medications do have adverse effects. Now, there's certain antidepressants that help also. There's a duloxetine, oxycodone, which is what I take, tramadol, and I read up a lot of people use that one. There's morphine. I tried that one time. Uh, I believe it was a patch, and again, that I just didn't like the way that one felt at all. Uh, you got lidocaine, and then you have capsaicin, which I've talked about before, burns my skin when I use that product. I wanted to read this one in regards to the opiates because there's always negativity put on those type of medications. But, you know, they they work for me at some point in time. They're not that not the best, but they do uh, take my pain level down a couple notches. But uh, um, while opiates are frequently used in the treatment of neuropathic pain, their long term Ephensacy remains uncertain. Opiates such as tramadol, oxycodone, and morphine are not considered first-line therapy for patients with diabetic neuropathy. However, these agents have been studied to support their efficiency and safety in the treatment of neuropathic pain. Oxycodone, tramadol, and morphine are opiates. Common adverse effects include constipation, drowsiness, nausea, headache and dizziness. Now, I think this is the one issue that they have with this is that the physical dependence and withdrawal symptoms may sometimes limit the use of opiates. Opiates should be avoided in patients with a history of drug and alcohol abuse. So again, when you're taking this type of product, you need to look into uh, your doctor first because it says right here, several factors should be considered when individually 
uh, selecting therapy for your pain, including tolerability, adverse effects, cost effectiveness, and improvement of sleep, mood, and quality of life. Check with your doctor and make sure that you keep him in the loop of any issues that are coming up in regards to your medications that you're taking. So I know I've talked about this before, uh, what natural treatments you can take for peripheral neuropathy. But I still wanted to uh, retouch on this subject because there's a lot of requests and a lot of people want to know about it. So here's eight natural treatments for peripheral neuropathy. Treatment for neuropathy depends on the cause. Some common treatments involve physical therapy, surgery, and injections for increased nerve pressure. Other treatments focus on reducing pain and discomfort with over-the-counter pain killers such as ibuprofen or aspirin. I remember when my first pain started coming about, you know, you get to the point where you're taking ibuprofen. First, you start out with three. It works for a while. You start out with four, and then you're at five, and then you're at six. I was taking a lot of them, and it just kept getting worse and worse. So that's when I stepped and went into the doctor's office. So the first thing would be vitamins. Sometimes our bodies don't have enough vitamin B, and that's essential for nerve health. Now you can get vitamin B by your meals that you, that you make, or you can get them in capsule form. Also, you need to look at your vitamin D, which is something I take. Also, I take B1, B12, and I also take vitamin D and flaxseed oil. So the next here, the next suggestion is cayenne pepper. Cayenne pepper contains capsaicin, an ingredient in hot peppers that make them spicy. Capsaicin has been used in topical creams for pain relief properties. It decreases the intensity of the pain signals sent through the body. I would be careful with that because I've had allergic reactions to that product. Uh, the next one is uh, quit smoking. Smoking affects your blood circulation. The blood vessels narrow and less oxygenated blood can get through. Then we come to a warm bath. Taking a warm bath can be soothing and can also alleviate pain symptoms for neuropathy. That's what I did. I would always jump in the bathtub and just soak my legs in there until they stopped hurting because that was the way that I could only get to sleep with this. You know, I had RLS, restless leg syndrome, until it was diagnosed and that was the only thing I could do to stop the pain. Uh, also, you want to do regular exercise, which can help combat pain and improve your overall health. The next one is essential oils, which uh, I've talked about on one of my other episodes, which is a product that I take. Um, you can always go back on my past episodes, but I use orange um, oil, and that one seems to work the best for me. And we come up with meditation is next. Um, meditation techniques can help people struggling with neuropathy symptoms live through their pain. It can also help lower stress, improve coping skills, and decrease your pain intensity. And finally, we come to acupuncture. Acupuncture promotes natural healing of stimulating by the body's pressure points. This technique triggers the nervous system to release chemicals that can change the pain experience and threshold. Acupuncture helps to provide an in injury balance, energy balance to the body that can affect your emotional well-being. You know, that's one I might have to try and see how that works for me. The uh, My doctor right now is doing this new technique uh, for me on my body. I don't know what the name it is, but at the end of this month, I see him again, and I'll get the name of that treatment so I can pass it off to you guys maybe you can talk to your doctor about it but you know it's kind of weird that it worked the same day that he used it now mind you over this whole month my pain is starting to come back but it worked for a couple days so so maybe more of that treatment that he's going to give me is going to help now remember there's tons and tons of information out there on neuropathy and you you know you need to make sure that the uh, websites that you use are well established and they're websites that you've heard of so you don't end up getting some bad information and also if you're going to try something new make sure you tell your doctor first and get his advice to make sure that your body can go through whatever uh, type of 
natural treatment that you're going to find that you think will work for your body. I'm not sure if there's any cure out there. I haven't found any. And with every year with my uh, neuropathy, you know, you can tell when your body's starting to shut down. And that's where I'm at right now is that, you know, every year I can only do less and less. So it's a long road, a uh, painful road, but it's one that I know I can overcome with just a lot of will willpower on my on myself. So finally, this website comes out with a outlook. Prevention works so much better than treatment. Keeping your blood sugars within the normal range will help prevent your neuropathy from worsening. If your neuropathy is related to alcohol intake, stop drinking now to prevent conditions from getting worse. Natural remedies have some success in alleviating the pain symptoms of peripheral neuropathy. However, be sure to consult with your doctor prior to participating in a new treatment method. If you begin experience, experiencing irregular symptoms from natural remedies or if your condition worsens, visit your doctor immediately. So if anybody else comes up with some ideas or have seen something on, online in regards to uh, treatment or maybe somebody says they have a cure for it, you know, I really like to know about it so I can look it over uh, for myself and see if these things will work for me. Or, and I can pass it on to everybody else that listens. But, you know, I, I'm so glad that I have this opportunity to do this. I'm hoping that it helps um, others out there that deal with nerve pain. As we come to a close, it's my hope this podcast and other sources, such as product reviews that I have discussed today, can better our lives and give us some relief dealing with neuropathy. This episode plus others are posted every Monday on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, iTunes, Spotify, and Stitcher. And finally, whatever life throws at you, even if it hurts you, just be strong and fight through it. Remember, strong walls shake, but never collapse. Talk to you next Monday.